the reality of my kids schooling doesn't look much different than mine did. Rows of desks, square classroom spaces, hard seating surfaces, and really engaged in more compliance work than anything else. Is this how we prepare our kids for the complexity of the world that they live in? Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Mike the Principal podcast. Thanks for checking out and dropping in to have a listen. Uh, Don't forget that you can like and subscribe to make sure that you don't miss out on new content when it's added. So please be sure to click that like, click that subscribe button. It is greatly appreciated. And if you like what you hear, don't be afraid to go ahead and share this with your favorite educator friend. So go ahead and share it on your social media platforms. If you know a teacher, know someone in education, uh, someone who's on a path in educational leadership, uh, be sure to share this podcast. Again, it's greatly appreciated. So today's episode is uh, really about what principals need to do um, to really prepare for, for future ready learning, right? Like what is... What is the world telling us about how we need to prepare kids in schools and what are we going to do about it? And I I picked my kid up at school and asked a question that I, that I ask most oftentimes is how was school today or what did you do at school today? Right. And it's, it's always typically the same response. Uh, Very, uh, very few interesting points uh, does not seem super engaged and, and that by no means mean that he, he's not getting, he gets a good education. Um, but is it preparing him for some of the things we're going to talk about today? And that's what I want you to think about from whether you're a school leader, a teacher, a parent, someone who is in or near or around schools. That's what I want you to think about today is our kids currently being prepared for the type of, of world and the complexities that come with that world, is that what school's preparing them to do? And my thought to myself after I picked my son up was that why does he have to go through the almost the identical experience that I went through as a student? School, you know, it was not um, it was not my favorite thing, and I was not super engaged. Uh, part of that was me. Uh, part of that was 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 some of the educators that whose classrooms I sat in. Um, but the reality is that, uh, it's been quite some time since I've been removed from the, the public K-12 system as a student and not much has changed for the experience that my kids and kids here in the United States receive. And the crazy part is the future is here, whether we want to believe it or not. Right? So like if we're a school leader, whether you like it or not, the future is here. So it leads me to my first point in today's episode. What, what does that mean for school leaders? How do we have to shift our work? And, I, and I'm not talking about the type of shift that happens in education a lot. Shifting for the sake of shifting. That's not what I'm talking about. We have a lot of data that is available to us as school leaders. And if you've heard me talk about data before, I, I believe that, that school culture and, and the things that we do as, as school leaders, those things all come before we look at data. But data still has a place to inform our work. And most recently in 2023, the World Economic Forum released incredible data sets that I think can f- inform. Actually, I don't think. I know must inform our work as school leaders in terms of how we're preparing kids for the future. And I'm gonna show, uh, if you're not watching us on YouTube, it's totally fine, because I will I will share some of these uh, graphics that I'm gonna talk about in the show notes. But I wanna point out some of the data from the World Economic Forum, again, released in 2023, but the fastest declining jobs that we see are jobs that have really low complexity. Jobs that are really easy to do. And the reason that we, we, we now know, right, is that those jobs are the jobs that are most likely going to be replaced by some form of AI or machine learning or autonomy, right? Like 
it's going to be autonomous robotics that take over some of those those jobs. And to be honest with you, it has before. Like you see on this list, you see bank clerks, you see cashiers, obviously like two great examples, right? Like not many people go to a physical brick and mortar bank any any longer. And most people when they when they cash out, most places have some form of self checkout, right? So the low complexity jobs, those are going to be going away. And you can see here in the graphic, the fastest growing jobs and where those are, right? Right off the bat, we see machine learning and artificial intelligence. We know that those are going to be incredibly important um, fields, if you will, in the future. And in addition to that, you see some other things on this list like sustainability, uh, obviously the, the conversation around global warming, uh, regardless of where you fall there, right? We know that the jobs in sustainability are going to be there, right? And you can you could chalk up a uh, a Tesla as a st- sustainability company, right? Like we're looking at different ways of doing things that we've we've the way different than the way we've always done them, right? So you have other things like finance, uh, fintech, financial tech, uh, engineers, obviously, in in a whole a whole host of engineering, right? Whether it's computer engineering, electrical engineering, aeronautical engineering, uh, there is no shortage of designs that need to be problem solved. And engineers are going to, to do that. And you can see kind of the through line that works there is that these require some incredibly complex thinking. And if we know that, then we need to make sure that schools and the types of learning that's happening regardless of the age of the student, right? Like, like kindergartners are capable of, of complex learning. It looks different than it does in 12th grade and, and, and it should, but complexity still has a place in grades PK through 12. There's no doubt whatsoever. In addition to that, the World Economic Forum released um, what is called job churn report. And you can see it here in this graphic. And I'll, again, I'll link it in the show notes. But job churn is real, right? For each job that is lost, there will be almost one equal job replacement. So oftentimes we'll hear excuses that jobs are going to go away. Well, jobs are not, are, they are going to go away. Some jobs will go away, but they are going to be replaced by jobs that are going to require more complex problem solving skills and critical thinking. So what do those jobs look like? And the reality of the matter is that many kids who are going into kindergarten are going to work in career fields that don't even exist yet. So how do we prepare kids for that type of learning? That's a, that's a really, really tough job that schools are left to do. But if we know what skills are required of students, right? And you can see them here in this, this, this chart, again, released by the World Economic Forum. This is recent data, 2023 data. We know from the skills, analytical thinking, creative thinking, resilience, flexibility, motivation, curiosity, systems thinking, leadership, and then social influence, how they're operating within their peer group, and even in, in, a, in a digital footprint. Y'all, we're taking cell phones away from kids in in schools right now. How do we expect them to be able to 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 hold and have a, a a reputable social footprint and social influence? Social now means something completely than it different than it did even five years ago. Look at the influencers that are are have an influence on our kids today. That is all coming through a form of different communication than we received it. And then how do these skills align with the answer that I get when I ask my kid, how was school today? Or what did you do at school today? How are these skills being reflected in the answers? So that's what it means for school leaders today. So let's talk about what do leaders do about it? Like if we know that that's the case, what do we do about it? The first thing, actually, the, the one thing that I'm going to talk about today is going to be focused on a learning model. Like, do you have a model for what you want it to look like? What does the teaching and learning look like? Is it tied back to some form of model? So do you have one? 
Have If you have one, have you reflected on what it says? Are you delivering on that? And then what does that look like in your classrooms? What does the teaching and learning look like? Further, do you have structures in your systems within your school or in your district that support this model? And it's okay if you don't. But I'm, I'm talking to you today about the need for school leaders, regardless if you're at, in a school building or in a district leadership position or even a state level leadership position, what are you doing about it? Think about some of the systems and supports that are in place for that would, that would help support a learning model. So your communities of practice, right? Your professional learning communities, your educator competencies. What do you want educators to be within your school or your district? Also, induction and mentoring. Do those things align and support the learning model that you have in place? And does your professional learning systems that you have in your school or district, do those things support what you want teaching and learning to look like within your learning model? So how have you been in, in development of a model that is going to help support some of the needs and skills that I outlined in the previous part of the episode? We know what data is telling us. So what are we going to do about it? And it's, it, I'm here to say it's not your fault, right? If you look at the historical performance of the United States education system, and I'm talking over the past 100 years, it did a pretty good job for a long period of time, right? Like it led the world in quality of educational standards for a long time. It helped to drive the largest one of the largest economies, actually the largest economy at the time in the world. In addition to that, it was it was meeting most of the needs that were required. It helped us to win two world wars. It, it, it contributed a lot to our society. That's why it's so difficult for us to initiate any change within that system. So it's not your fault. But that doesn't mean that we don't do anything about it, right? Especially when data is telling us that we have to do something about it. So what is the purpose of school? And can you answer that question consistently across your school or your district? Will you get a consistent answer to what is the purpose of school? And I will tell you that doing nothing will produce the exact same outcomes that we are, are used to getting, right? And we have to do something about that. The time has come and gone for us to stay status quo. We, we have data sets in front of us. I'm talking about them today that require us to make a shift in our learning model design. And you, most of the people that listen to this podcast, you are leaders, but you may have influence on a leader. If you're a teacher, a parent, PTO member, like you have influence on the leaders in your system and it's time for them to step up and lead and talk about what does the learning model need to look like in order to support the types of learning that we just laid out and we know are driven by reports like those put out by the World Economic Forum in 2023. If you don't have a learning plan, develop one. If you have one, make sure it's in alignment to what it is you expect for outcomes in your teaching and learning environment. If you have one in place, it's time to reflect on it and make sure that it has the alignments that you want it to. Does teaching and learning look like and produce outcomes for students that align with the types of data that we just talked about. So that when we ask the question, what did you do at school today? Your students will answer in ways that align to the skill sets that we know they need to have to be successful. And I know it's a lot, but you absolutely 100% can do it. And I talked about ways to start that conversation going back to your school going back to your district and looking at whether or not you have a learning plan and if you don't one if you don't have one develop one 
If you have one, make sure it's aligned. Is it producing the outcomes in the teaching and learning environments that you want to see and is preparing kids for the future, the massively complex future that they are going to live in? As always, I appreciate you tuning in for a little bit and listening uh, to this podcast. Don't forget to like and share uh, and be sure to subscribe so that you can get new content when it drops. And then be, sh- you know, I, I'm super appreciative when you share it with people. I see people on social media uh, sharing the, the episodes. I, I'm greatly appreciative of that. So please keep that up as well. Until next time, we'll see you later.